Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Today we've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I've got a lot to do and a little bit of time. And I want to share with you a new tool that I got in the shop that I think that you will find interesting. It's going to keep this place cleaner, and healthier when I'm using my cutting tools and stuff in here. You may not even known this thing existed, but I've got one and I'm going to share it with you. First thing I got to do is get some of this stuff out of the way. So I got room to work and then we'll get started. So thanks for watching. So I've had people ask, why do you keep your hood open on your truck? It's because I keep the battery unhooked. Really need a disconnect switch because I don't want the shop to burn down because of this truck's electronical pieces that aren't in the best of shape ever. It's not horrible. In fact, I went over it and it's pretty decent, but I don't trust it. Old Smokey's got those ears on, and he's hot on your trail, and he ain't gonna stop till you're in jail. I'm sorry. That song is so stuck in my head. Just over and over. <laughs> Let me show you this really neat cabinet. I think that some of you will find it interesting. I think it's absolutely awesome. It's not just any cabinet. It is a do-all supply cabinet, or do-all bandsaw blades and files from your nearest uh, do-all sales and service center what it says on the front. This is a specific bandsaw cabinet designed to keep your full bands, your already made bands, your band stock, your band guides, tires for your bandsaw wheels, all of the guides for your uh, uh, file bands. Yes, file bands. You could convert a bandsaw into a filing machine and I've got a few uh, band files here, yes. A file on a bandsaw blade. I know a lot of you have seen this before, but I'm gonna bet that a lot of you haven't. And it's just a row of files, hopefully you can see that well, that are attached to a band. So if you wanted to put some draft in a, a, in a die or just general filing, um, I'm not sure that they caught on all that well. You gotta use these in conjunction with the, the proper guides and stuff, of course. Uh, they don't take your normal uh, bandsaw guides, but uh, they're pretty neat. But one mistake, hitting a hard spot in something could be a very costly mistake. So I don't think that they were all that common. One day we will put a band file on my machine and I'll show it uh, in practice. So really neat cabinet, like I said, designed specifically for saw stuff. And you can see you get a lot of it uh, with the saw. So there you go. Pretty neat. It's a dual band saw cabinet. So are you ready to see something pretty cool? I thought you were. This is what I'm about to install, and it is a Miller. It's an air filtering unit for oxygen settling use, welding, uh, plasma cutting. If there's anything that drives me up the wall, it's the smell of a plasma cutter. I don't know why, but it does. Welding fumes and stuff are just not, not good, and we need a way to filter that out of the air without losing all of our conditioned air in the shop. I keep a you know, this is not that great of a sealed up place, but I keep a dehumidifier running and in the wintertime I keep a wood stove to keep some heat in here. Otherwise, I'd freeze to death. And if I vented all of my smoking stuff that I create outside, then I'd be freezing in no time and Cora would complain. And I don't want that. So this thing is about perfect. It's got a big filter in it, filters the air and then injects it back into the room. So this is a used unit. It came from a surplus auction. Let me show you what it's made of and then we will clean it up a bit and install it. Try to. So this unit has a huge filter inside of it. 
that uh, is it actually it's in really good shape luckily it does not need changed because just one filter element for this thing is like 500 bucks but as much as i will generate just me alone fumes and stuff i think the filter on this will last a very very long time i'm just wiping it off because it's corroded and not corroded but uh got all kinds of grease and stuff on it and then i'll uh, show you inside of it it's filthy filthy it's quite mild. <laughs> This outlet here is going to have to be swapped onto the other side. So go ahead and clean it though. Oh, it's open water. So let's take just a quick break from this video just for a second to tell you that Sunday I should have a machining video for you guys, at least if everything goes as planned. So keep your eyes open. We should hopefully, if all goes well, have two videos this week. Just letting you know early. So you can watch for it. Ow. Oh, sorry. What do I do? Pinch your fingers. You need to watch him, Mister. <laughs> so let me show you the filter unit that's in this thing. All it is is a massive air filter. You can see it's a little brown, but actually it's in it's in pretty good shape. It's got plenty of life left in it. It's massive. Let me show you uh, down inside of it. It's really a pretty simple setup. So it's just a large cavity with an inlet on the back. Got a little uh, pre-filter here that I, need, that I need to clean up. Um, you can pull air into it from either side. I need to actually swap uh, the inlet and, and, the pull, and the cap down here. I actually need to swap those two because I'm gonna be plumbing it up backwards from what it was. It's also got a differential pressure gauge in the front you'll see that in just a minute, that measures the differential pressure between one side of the filter and the other and tells you via gauge when your filter's getting clogged. So it's a pretty, pretty fancy unit. You got to dodge them, you got to duck them. You got to keep that diesel trucking. So I'll show you how I'm going to mount this guy in just a second, but what I want to do now is swap my inlet side. That way, when I go to plumb this up, it'll be, it'll be the way that I like it the way that I need it. So in case you haven't worked out how this thing operates, basically you have a hose down to your, wherever you're welding. You, you have a fan that pulls air through this and it just sucks up the fumes. That's all. This is just the filter box. The fan is over here. I'll show you in just a second. It's totally separate unit. that is all cleaned up. You've seen the filter side of it. Let me show you the fan side of it. It's got to be cleaned up as well. A 
So here is a look at the fan that actually pulls the air uh, from whatever your welding area or whatever uh, through a hose, through the filter, and then pushes it basically back out into the shop. It takes quite a quite a strong unit. This is a like squirrel cage fan. Look how dirty it is. Obviously, it was used in a greasy, dirty environment. So it's going to take some cleaning. But you know, it's got to be done. And you talk about a job, cleaning this thing up has been a big job. Even the paint on the motor is starting to come off and all I'm using to clean this thing is just a real mild uh, dish detergent and water. But whatever that was that was on here, you know, kind of made the paint soft, whatever, doesn't matter. It didn't hurt the fan housing, it looks like it may be powder coated, but the motor itself is painted. Bless America. Nothing to see here. Move along. Mm. Goodness. So we've got a low voltage and a high voltage option for this thing, and we've got two bundles of three here. So that's telling me that it is wired for the low voltage side. So we've got on the low voltage side, if we were going to wire this for low voltage, we would tie one, three, and eight together, and then our line one incoming power would hook to that, and then our line two would be four, five, and two. So that's the way this should be wired. Yeah, two bundles, three. So it is wired. We got eight. Wait, eight, three, and one should be together. They've got this thing wired wrong. Oh man, check that thing out. That's fancy. Heck, that's a cast aluminum uh, impeller, I guess you'd say. Not exactly for sure. Fan blade, we'll call it that. Let's see, it's even balanced. It's even got balancing weights on it. Wow, that's pretty impressive. It's got a lot of goo on it. So, gotta get that off because that will affect its balance as well. That is nice. Look at all the pieces of sticks on the floor. I sweep this at least every other day. And uh, she loves chewing on them. She loves me throwing them as well. It's worth the mess. You want this? This one? Getting close, cleaning up that fan. 
not easy, but I got it. It actually cleaned up really good. Ugh. All right, so it's time to test this thing. I looked into the reason it was wired to the wires were backwards, and it's because they wanted it to run the other way, not because it was wired wrong. So I am interested to see if this thing works. Hopefully it does. Hopefully it doesn't just shoot off of the stand. I wired it just the way that I wired it just the way that they did uh, originally. So let's plug this thing in. Well, it definitely works. It's just as smooth as silk. It's that good quality uh, rotor in there. Nice. A little loud, but it may not be as loud when it's all hooked up. So these things are clean. Test run complete. Man, that was a pain in the tail, and I'm glad that it's done. That was the hard part. Now it's time for the really hard part, and that is getting these babies on the wall by myself. Uh, this unit here, the filter box, it's going to be going right here. You know, as high as I can get it, really, so it's out of the way. Uh, originally, I was going to make a tilt and bracket that I could pull some pins and it would hang down so I could pull the filter out uh, horizontally to service it. Eh, I'm not going to do that. It's got a bracket with it where you can just lift it off and set it down once a year or so that I need to pull this filter out and check it. Um, and it's got a gauge on it that will tell me when that is. I'll use my fork truck and save my effort. This unit, the fan unit, it's gonna go over here to the right of the filter box. Hopefully it'll all fit well there. So that's the plan. Let's get the bracketry and anchors and make it happen. All right, so here's the bracket that mounts to the wall. And then this thing just, it just sits down on the bracket. And you screw these bolts in and that locks the unit to the bracket. Gravity will hold uh, it on the bracket, but just for safety it has, has some bolts there. So it's looking like, I want to mount this pretty high, I mean, close to the ceiling, the top of it. And it's looking like about 16 inches off the ceiling, my first row of bolts, and then I can position this right to left wherever pretty much I want it in that area. So that's the deal, 16 inches off the ceiling, maybe 18 inches would be fine. Should be good to go, I think. So to mount this thing up on the wall, I'm gonna be using these quarter inch by inch and a quarter Tapcon concrete anchors. Now the bracket looks like this. It's got three on the top, three on the bottom, and it fastens to the back. So the pull strength on these, if in, in hollow block embedded one inch is 500 pounds per screw. So that's 1,500 pounds of pullout strength on the top. And we're not counting the bottom ones because they'll be uh, under compression. You know, they're just kind of holding the bracket in place. So I'm thinking that that's going to be more than enough to hold this up. I mean, obviously we'll find out if it's not, but I'm pretty confident that this is going to work. So. Let's get started mounting this thing up on the wall. So that entire unit, I haven't weighed it, but I'm guessing the whole filter unit only weighs about 70 pounds. It's, it's really not that heavy. Yeah, 
I'm gonna go more than 18 inches because I got the spout sticking off and it's gonna maybe interfere with that. Is that enough on that side? Over oh, just a little right there. This may look unsafe, but that's a 1,200 pound cart that's holding that. I'm just lifting the cart, so not unsafe. I wouldn't call it super safe, but it's not, not near as dangerous as it looks. That side's on. Sides on. Now we just need to let it down. Ugh. My forklift wouldn't lift high enough, so I had to get some sort of extension. There we go. She is mounted. You got to dodge them. You got to duck them. You got to keep that diesel trucking. You got to put that hammer down and give her the beans. The song is still in my head. Looking good, happy with the placement. Hanging it was so much easier than what I thought that it was gonna be. I did it by myself. And once a year or so, I'll pull it down. Whenever the differential pressure meter says that it needs to be serviced, I'll pull it down and either clean the filter or put one in it. I like its placement. Put an LED light under it and even be able to see at my grinders better. It didn't use any space that I was using high wall space, I mean, in most shops, it's completely clear. So that, I think, is a good place for it. Completely out of the way. Now it's time to hang the part that moves the air. That's just a filter housing, which is the fan. It's just as heavy, a little smaller. We're gonna have to pull the bracket off of it, mount the bracket, then mount the fan. You'll see it's gonna be a couple step process, but that's what's next. So let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's exciting. Oh, look, I got it. So that's as far as we're going to get on our Miller Filter SWX-D. That's a model, in case you're interested. A fume extractor system. I don't have enough of the hose that it takes to plumb the fan to the box and then from the fan down to the to the work area. And I looked into the price on this uh, fabric outside. It's got a wire supported on the inside. You know what this stuff is. I looked into the price of this stuff because I was like, yeah, I'll just buy some of that. Uh-uh, that stuff's industrial priced only. It's not for the home shop guy. Used car expensive, really, to get down to get enough of that to get down to this work area. So I'm gonna have to be a little crafty and come up with something that is more cost effective uh, and that'll still meet my needs. So we're gonna have to work on that and uh, figure something out. Got to, still gotta build my arm, you know, and I'll probably hard plumb where I can as well to keep down on the costs of uh, two, or hose, that stuff. Huh, just amazed, I really was. So 
I'm happy with this placement. It's up and out of the way in space that I wasn't going to use to begin with. Going to fill it with or filled it with a piece of equipment that'll make the shop a lot more healthy. You know, a lot better in the winter time, especially if you're doing stick welding, MIG welding, or plasma cutting. Especially, I can't stand the smell of a plasma cutter. It just it's horrible. It couldn't be healthy either. So, hopefully now I won't have to take my stuff outside in the winter time uh, to avoid smoking the shop up. Now that we got this thing, I just got to finish it out. So that's all we can do on this at the moment, but. I am glad to get it to the point that it's at. So like I mentioned, that's about as far as I can get on this project in this video until I get some more parts, but we still got a lot to do. I got to plumb that thing together. We're, I want to do a swinging arm build that uh, the hose hooks to and reaches out in the floor, uh, and then maybe some sort of uh, scoop or something on the end to direct the flow in. And then when I'm done, hopefully it will swing out of the way. So that'll be a separate video uh, all in its own where we build plumb and build that arm and then uh, you know test you test the unit our miller filter swxd whatever it is i'm looking forward to using that thing it should be really nice because it smokes up the shop like crazy as you guys probably know uh, from from any welding that you do in here with the doors closed so i'm really looking forward to that thing so Keep your eyes open, like I mentioned. Should have a machining video coming this Sunday uh, if all goes as planned and I get all of my editing done. So keep your eyes open. Last week I did not post at all, and I know some of you are like, what, where is Steve at? And uh, Steve was hunkered down, uh, recovering from a huge storm that come through, and I know a lot of you guys uh, dealt with the same thing that are uh, you know, near, near Kentucky, and I'm not for sure how far it retched through the states, but it was a pretty horrible windstorm 70 mile an hour sustained winds we were without power for two days my parents were out without power for four days sitting in front of a candle at night once the sun goes away um, not much fun really and then cleaning up limbs and all sorts of everything that blew out and out of the yard um, so that's what i did last weekend so keep your eyes open machine video coming this sunday hopefully like i mentioned and uh, i think that's it Thanks for watching. Uh, viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, it is very, very much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Got some super exciting stuff coming in the future. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.